Let's dive further into it with uh, founder and CEO Jared Isaacman. Jared, it's great to have you on the program. Welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. It's a little hard for me to stay on subject when I can also ask you about space and Elon Musk. I mean, how do you, how, how, what does a day for you even look like? <laughs> the, the vast majority of my time is very much spent with, uh, with Shift4. We've got a lot going on. We're, we're winning a lot of business. We're expanding globally. We actually had a lot to talk about today in that regard. So uh, that's still my primary focus. But, um, you know, space is certainly very interesting. Before we come back to the global expansion, and, you know, there's some synergies there with space and, and all the rest of it. But in all seriousness, there's a big um, kind of controversy, let's call it, in the restaurant payment space right now because Toast, some of the others are... They have these fees that restaurants are getting upset about. You guys are trying to go the other way. Just uh, talk to us a little bit about this competition and what you think your advantage could be here. Yeah, so, so first, I mean, with Shift4, we, we've been growing very fast in the restaurant space for, you know, nearly two decades now. I mean, we touch about a third of the restaurants in the country. We can, we, we can, we can win a lot of restaurants and we can do so profitably. So we're not trying to price our way out of a problem. I think some of your other growth of your tech players, you know, looking for opportunities to you know, um, achieve profitability might might have um, been looking at things differently. From our perspective, this isn't the time to be punishing restaurants. Uh, it's the time to be helping them out. So we launched a program. Will every re any restaurant that wants to switch over to Shift4 for our services, we'll give them five thousand dollars. We'll also pay them a dollar for every online order instead of trying to penalize their customers for doing so. Um, the results have been, you know, received pretty favorably. We've got a lot of demand right now. That's not going to be a bait and switch where it works for now for customer acquisition, but then you have to change it to stay profitable. No, I, I think there's a big difference between an organization like ourselves. I mean, we grew EBITDA 60% year over year. I mean, we raised the top end of our guidance. Uh, you know, we expect EBITDA to be upwards of 460 million. We have 55% free cash flow conversion. We're not looking for opportunities to ding a customer relative to some of the others out there that are actually burning, you know, several hundred million a year. And they're kind of looking for opportunities to, to create extra income. This is an opportunity for us to be able to help customers, just as we've done in the restaurant space for more than 20 years. Right. And obviously, it's been a tough go for the IPOs that came public around the time you did. But your shares are still up about uh, double since then. Is this the company you founded at 16 or was that a previous one? No, no. Same company. Uh, same company. I mean, we've evolved a lot. I mean, when I was 16 years old, the name of the company was United Bank Card. It had to sound like it had been around for a really long time. Um, you know, as we've evolved, we're very much more of a tech and software software organization. But we've grown revenue year over year every year since the time we were in my parents' basement, you know, uh, 24 years ago, even through now. Well, <laughs> I don't even think I would have understood and had the foresight to try to sound older when I was, you know what I mean? Like there, there's a lot, uh, a lot to unpack there. Um, we just spoke with a couple of CEOs, one in particular more on the restaurant side, who's a little concerned about the back half, maybe student loan payments and all that. Um, what do you think in terms of overall payment volumes? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's important, one, to disconnect Shift4 and kind of our growth algorithm with that of, you know, um, you know, same store sales and kind of consumer sentiment. I mean, if we, we grew payment volume 60 percent year over year in the quarter, um, you know, you can have consumers that may choose to dial back a little bit of their spending. Um, you know, same store sales could be flat, could be up 1 percent. And, and that's pretty, pretty pale relative to 60 some odd percent. And that's because our growth is entirely a factor of winning share. It's a big addressable market. We differentiate in a lot of ways. We win net new customers. It's how we grew payment volume in restaurants double digits in 2020 when a lot of our customers were operating at like 20 percent strength. And again, it was a factor of winning share. So, you know, that said, you know, our hotel and travel business going very strong, stadiums going strong, ticketing going strong. Restaurants, there's definitely a little moderation there. Hmm. It's not the uh, euphoria of, of 2021 when everybody was reopening and things were going out of control, but people are still going out and eat and drink. And, um, you know, it's obviously still contributing very well to our volume growth.